I want to start off by saying hello to everyone and welcome to you all to this last Better Moments webinar before Christmas and before the new year, uh, where we're going to be presenting some of the amazing workshops which we have on offer for you in 2022. Uh, thank you so much to all of you for joining us today. My name is Ben and I'm the marketing manager here at Better Moments. Um, let us know in the chat if you have time where you're joining us from today, because we'd love to know. We have people joining us from all over the world, and I'll be the one keeping an eye on that chat and also managing tonight's Q&A as well. Uh, I can see some of you have already done so, but you're welcome to have your camera on. You will be automatically muted and the camera will be off, but feel free to turn that camera on. And uh, if you have questions at the end, of each person's presentation, feel free to either type it in the chat or you can, uh, you can also raise your hand and turn your mic on during the Q&A and ask those questions there. Uh, in a moment, I will pass you over to Christian Nurgor, who, as some of you may know, is the founder and the CEO of Better Moments. But before we do that, I'd really uh, like to say how privileged we are to be joined by so many fantastic photographic experts today, uh, such as Cesar Primberg, uh, Hamid Sada, Anna Hodalik, and Tom D. Jones, who are gonna be running us through some of the fantastic highlights of their Better Moments workshops with us in just a few moments. So keep those questions coming, and I look forward to talking to all of you at the end of this, but without further ado, I will now pass us over to Christian, who will share his screen and get the ball rolling, I think, with the first of tonight's presentations. Absolutely. Um, thank you for joining in. It's always a fantastic moment to realize that, that for, for years ago, I got this idea. It could be great to uh, connect to the greatest photographers in the world and and together we could make this platform better moments. And um, one thing is to have an idea and then all suddenly things happen. And I will start to show you just some few slides uh, about our story because uh, to, this year is, is 10 years ago, actually we started Better Moment. And um, this catalog is, is one that will be shared with you later tonight. So you can go more uh, into details so this is actually just to show you some of the highlights. But as I just said, for 10 years ago, we got this idea it could be great uh, to create better moments. And um, actually after a few months, we was able already in 2011 to host the first workshop, which went to, to Iceland. And we got extremely uh, ambitious about our workshop programs. Before we knew about it, we rented, uh, rented uh, a ship on Svalbard. And uh, it happened so fast, everything, and all suddenly we had been on Iceland, and before uh, we actually really had, uh, you know, our soul involved in this project, we were standing on Svalbard and, and with polar bears around us, and many things happened in that period of time. Jumping a little bit ahead, this is now we in 2014, and in the year in between, a lot of other workshops was coming up. And this is just to show you a glimpse how it is to hanging from a helicopter uh, and shooting over uh, the ice of um, Greenland. Anyhow, we in 2015, more workshops came out. We went back to, uh, to Svalbard. We went to Asia uh, in Burma on a great trip. And we was working hard to find new destination. And at the same time, we got deeply involved with National Geographic in Washington because they needed somebody in Scandinavia to host the exhibition. So we was actually partnered up with National Geographic and did a lot of exhibitions. 216. Okay, um, uh, question, sorry. Could you uh, share your screen with us to show the, uh, show the visuals? You don't see anything? Yeah, we uh, see you. Except you. <laughs> wow, my God. I know that uh, I'm exciting to look at, but not that exciting. <laughs> you should have said it before. Let me see see what happens now. Uh, sorry. Let's see here. Share screen there. Was that better? Ta-da. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. 
Okay. All right. Anyhow, so you, you got the most of it before I run it through it fast. This is, as I said, uh, from an idea who started for 10 years ago. And the slide you didn't see before is this one here where we went to Iceland and Svalbard the very first year. Um, and um, I don't need to re repeat myself, but this is just another slide. It's 214 where we rented a, a big chopper uh, flying over uh, the ice cap uh, and the ice fjord of, of Greenland. And uh, this is a part of our, our concept from day one. And it's still that we want, we really want to make sure that, uh, that if we want to uh, explore, we, we will go the whole way. This is uh, we in 2015. And at that time we had been, as explained before, in Svalbard, Iceland, and running workshops in Sweden as well. And all of a sudden we took off for Asia for the very first time, which was, as I remember, um, it may not have been the first time in, in, in overseas in, in, uh, in Asia, but anyhow, we went to, uh, as you can see up there, we went to Indochina. And here we, in uh, 16, we also had the great uh, pleasure to combine a horse race, which we are doing again this year, actually in Il Palio, Italy, with the, a great photographer, Margot Di Paolo. We had Sisse, she went to Bhutan uh, with, the, with a very nice group. And I'm quite sure that those two beautiful people on this picture is joining us on this lecture from California and uh, all the best from Copenhagen. Um, again, a slide just to show you what happens uh, around this, this, those years. Uh, this slide is more to, to show you how important it always been for us with the graphic design. And as you can see in the right corner, it's actually Håkon Andersen, who is the graphic designer from National Geographic. And for us, it's very important to make catalogs and present our workshops, our experts, and whatever we're doing as strong as possible. Um, here is also just uh, an introduction to what happens in 2018. And you can see up there Arne, who is joining us tonight. He went to Cuba and there was a combination of a workshop where we did street photography, but Arne also brought flash equipment. And for the first time, we actually combined this uh, uh, portrait photography along our workshop with flash equipment. And Arne will explain more about that later when we are discussing, not discussing, but talking about Cuba as well. Perfect, this slide is just to let you all know that uh, we have been running quite many live webinars uh, lately. And um, tonight when this uh, seminar is, is, is finished, um, Ben will send us all an uh, email and in that email there'll be a link to all our seminars. There may be some there you would like to watch. It could be the one with uh, Marco Di Laue about uh, his photography in Il Palio. It could be Arne, Tom, Sisse, and Hamidas, where we all have done uh, lectures. And have you, if you haven't seen them, join them, see them, because you can really get way more information that we will be able to share with you tonight. The last slide, this one is, this slide here is just to let you know that this is how it works, how it is to work on better moment. Uh, this is from Burma, and it's Jim McCurry knocking me down with a big hammer. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there was a little bit about a better moments, and as Ben already told you all, and what would be very important from now on is that ask. Ask all the questions you like to ask us, because that's why we're here. This is the whole concept um, about this uh, presentation, that you should ask us all those questions that you would like us to answer and it can be everything about uh, where would this would it be cold in Finland in the middle of the night to pricing and all that but I would actually start to invite uh, Hamid uh, because he have he will be busy so give me just a second I will just need to reorganize this slide here and then we should all be ready in a second so Ben, maybe you should see if there are any questions already. Yes, uh, just having a look now, I can see there are no questions so far, but do let us know if you have any. Um, yeah. I just thought I'd fire one at you, Christian. What was the first workshop that you ever did 
with better moments the first workshop we, we made with better moments was uh, the most crazy workshop uh, you can think about because we was behind naive and we went to iceland and we brought a private chef we had uh, private drivers uh, we even had a helicopter just flying in and out with all kind of stuff and beside it was really a lot of fun but it also teach us a lot about that being this business is also a question about being able to, um, to, to, to have a budget. So we had fun and our budget was, uh, was kind of overheated and so was our credit card when we got home. But that was the first workshop and it was really a lot of fun. Um, I will share now my laptop here. Mm-hmm. And um, it's gonna see, am I sharing now? Yes, yes, you are. Good. So uh, the first workshop we should uh, talk about tonight is our Mongolian workshop, which is a high-end workshop, just as all our workshops, of course. And it's just as unique as everything we're working with. And, um, and for sure, it's have, this one is where, where we're going really into, deep into a, a, a culture uh, on this, in this part of the world. And I can think about a stronger uh, guy like, like Hamid to present us in this and also to bring us there. He has been filmmaking uh, from uh, Mongolia and he goes there as often as possible. And um, are you here? I am here, yes, indeed. Perfect, thank you so I, much. And I am just returning from Mongolia. I was there for the past two months and I've been back only for 10 days. I was on a... Um, shoot up in the northern part of Mongolia, bordering on Russia, where there's an immense forest bigger than the Amazon called the Taiga. I'm sure you've heard it. It's called the Boreal Forest, which extends all over the northern hemisphere. And uh, unfortunately, for the past two years, if you've seen all these fires, there was some in Australia and in, in the western United States, but also in Siberia, a lot of a lot of this uh, human heritage, this patrimony, is is has gone up in smoke. Yeah. So we, I was there initially. You know, when you talk about nine days of adventure, uh, uh, it's exactly what happened. You know, th- th- that's Mongolia for you. I mean, every time I go, there there is adventure, whether you like it or not. So th- th- this time, we were there trying to film. Um, some some rangers going about their business of monitoring you know snow leopards and other species but uh, but because of the fires uh, uh, all these bears began to move into the steppe from they left their forest and started attacking children and yaks and goats so there were about wow. 15 attacks only this year and many, wow. unfortunately, many of these bears had to be put down by the army because they started, you know, dragging people out of their yurts. Maybe I shouldn't mm-hmm. say this to your people, but we're going to be in a very different part of Mongolia, don't we? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah. So, but then what we did with the rangers, we, we managed to save um, three bear cubs. So... We, we dug a cave for them and uh, they're hibernating now. So we're trying to release them next year. But uh, again, so global warming, climate change, you know, we all talk about it and um, people are feeling the consequences of this all over the world. Uh, yeah. Combined with COVID and everything. I mean, the whole world is sort of changing, but ev- everywhere you go, uh, the consequences and the the problems people are dealing with are slightly different. So there they're dealing with bears. Um, here we're dealing with something else. Anyway, but Mongolia That's how it is. continues but... to, to, to be one of the most fascinating places um, I have traveled to and I continue going back. Uh, I, I've, I've been almost, uh, it's almost as if I've been put under the charm of, the, of this last nomadic country with no fences where you can gallop uh, without coming to a wall for, for weeks, for months even. There's, mm-hmm. there's an incredible sense of freedom there. It's an area the size of uh, uh, 
three times that of France, let's say, but, but there's only three million inhabitants. So there's a sense of space. And if we should uh, go a little bit into our workshop, Hamid. Uh, yeah, so, so Mongolia yeah, sorry. Is, is, is what I, I was about to do that as soon as you came oh, in. Right, sorry. right at a good moment. So Mongolia is great. Many people have been there as you, but within Mongolia, there are two places which are very remote, even to Mongol standards. And with better moments, we've decided to uh, have our workshop uh, in these two regions, in these two provinces in, in, in the West. One is called Hovd, H-O-V-D, uh, uh, which is pretty much uh, a landscape of semi-desert going up into mountainous regions with high altitude lakes with different ethnic uh, communities who are, who are basically herding five types of livestock, horses, sheep and goats, yaks and camels. Um, uh, and then uh, from in, in that, and then we're gonna go to the even further west where we will encounter the Kazakhs, another ethnic minority. And they're of course famous for capturing, training, and hunting with uh, these, these giant golden eagles. So mm -hmm. we're gonna basically sp split our time between these two uh, uh, areas. Um, and one thing about this area is, uh, I mean, Christian put the emphasis on culture and, and getting close to people and really getting in to know people and all that, but the landscape itself is completely magical. Um, it's like, I remember, it, if you're if you were an artist or a painter in America, you'd move to New Mexico, because uh, the light there was just amazing, and and any any photo you take at sunset or dawn turns out to be beautiful. It's the same with these two regions in Hovd mm -hmm. and especially Bayanogi. You know, every, every day, no matter you know what the weather is like, what the season is like, there's such incredible lighting in mm -hmm. in, in these mountains and valleys that you you just can't go wrong. So you, 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 you definitely end up coming back with beautiful pictures, but I think the purpose, what I would like to work on is not to come back just with postcards, but, but come back with the culture and experience, memories, uh, and, uh, and think about ways of, uh, of, of improving our, 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 our images to move from just recording uh, people in their everyday lives documenting uh, to, towards what we call uh, iconic. Um, because it's fine to, to go around to beautiful places and, and, and visit beautiful tribes and, and take pictures. And once in a while, the composition will just present itself to you, like a, <laughs> a, 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 a children carrying water from the river or going down this valley or, or a, a horseman um, at, at sunset or whatever, or, you know, uh, or, or let's think of Steve McCurry and the famous Afghan girl, for example, uh, an iconic portrait. Uh, these things suddenly fall on your lap and uh, you, you, you record them for posterity, humanity, and you, you create an icon. Mm. But there are ways to make the search for the iconic uh, the center of your quest. Mm -hmm. and this is what I really want, 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 want to work on. And uh, it's really about searching for those iconic moments and those compositions. Wow. So there, there's nothing wrong with stopping motion, taking people aside, befriending them, and just going for a walk with them or following them during their herding. Mm -hmm. And to, to have them stop, to, to look at your composition, to, 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 to start taking photographs in a bit more of a uh, implicated way. So there's mm -hmm. ways to do this and there's ways not to do this. So mm -hmm. basically the way to do that, and this is what I want, this is where my anthropology ethnography background comes in, is you have to develop a certain rapport. With, 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 you know, can't just be there, like I mean, the moments where there's a festival and we don't have time to meet, so we'll be there with your telephoto lenses and we get some beautiful shots. But, but you know, the, the, the real uh, juice, the real um, prize in all this is when you, you know, f find, you, you, you form a friendship mm -hmm. and you allow yourself to be seen 
as much as you are seeing. So the, the, and then you go off and you spend some time, maybe half a day, a day, walking around with that person and you develop an intimacy which allows you to capture something uh, of soul, uh, mm -hmm. which goes beyond the postcard, beyond the perfect portrait and the perfect lighting to communicate. And, and then if, 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 if lucky and if uh, you can start moving towards what is iconic. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what I would really like to focus on. I mean, we will have, of course, there'll be festivals and things where we won't have time to do this, but uh, we'll be taking food. But then there'll be other days when we'll be visiting nomadic families. And I'd like people to go off and, and, and decide who they connect with. Mm -hmm. in the community and, 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 and maybe go off for half a day herding with them or, or weaving some felt blankets uh, in, a, in a knitting circle somewhere or catching a, a wild bird or, or taming a wild horse or, or just, just following two beautiful uh, children for, for half the day of their chores going to the, to, to the well, uh, going yeah. down the roads. And then really focus on on, on doing something of a mini photo reportage, not just being there clicking away, but to really focus on your relationship and what it takes to make people open. And, mm -hmm. and one of the keys I can give you right now is it's proportional to the amount you allow yourself to be vulnerable and you allow others to see you. Thank you. It, it's really cool. I, I, I'm feeling that I, I have, uh, I'm more or less on, on my way to the airport, but uh, <laughs> we have to wait a little bit. And um, I wish we had way more time because I mean, uh, this is amazing. And uh, we have so we have more uh, workshops that we need to present tonight. So, but I think that was, that was fantastic. Uh, a quick information from my side is that we're going to stay together with the local people in special make tents for us, where we have privacy, toilet, and everything. So even that that um, that we will be really out on the countryside, we have people around us to take care of us and make sure that uh, that everything uh, goes fine. And uh, we have also been working on some solution if we need to charge our batteries and so on. So it's it's truly an adventure. And for those uh, who need that information, which should be all of us, uh, it's. Um, we're going to travel from the 19th to the 29th of November. But you can just go online on Better Moment and look it up. But once again, 19th to the 29th of November is where we are planning to go. Ben, are there any questions uh, on this? There are no questions yet. So please do fire away if you have any questions for Hamid. And thank you very much, Hamid, for presenting. That it was a fantastic insight into your workshop. Uh, I think for now, Christian, we're good to carry on to the next uh, workshop. Yeah, that's what I would do now. So um, my idea is now that we will actually try to go back, not try, but we will take the workshop as it comes over the year. And just uh, give me a second so I can have uh, everything up here. Yeah. Hamid, one quick question I was wondering was uh, if people have questions for you regarding equipment to take, uh, should they reach out to uh, you directly or is it okay if they, uh, they contact us and we put them in touch? I, either way. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do I share my my screen with everyone now? You do, yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, as said, we're gonna run through uh, workshops uh, that we will run over the year and uh, thanks to Hamid and about uh, Mongolia. And now we go a little bit back, we go to Finland, which is uh, will run uh, already in the month of uh, March. And uh, March is the best time of the year actually to go to where this part of Finland where we are going to. And the reason is straightforward. It, the weather is really clear and nice. A lot of uh, northern light as well. And snow, 
I mean, if you haven't seen snow, I guarantee you this is the place to go. And this will give me the chance to introduce you to Tom, which is uh, leading this workshop. And as you also can see, it's it's a combination where if, if you like, you can actually for free of charge also get some equipment from phase one. Um, when when we, we have some agreements with different kind of partners and uh, it's it's actually just to make a, a workshop a bit more convenient for those who joins in. There's no commitment to the equipment or anything like that. It's for free and uh, you can just try it out. And if you don't want to use it, you don't need to do it, but it's, it's there if you like it. And long story short, this workshop would include free use of uh, phase one equipment. And with those words, I would like to ask Tom just to tell us a little bit about how do you find those great moments in Finland uh, for you photography? Yeah, hi everybody. Um, well, Finland is um, the nice thing. It's, it's, it's when, once you arrive, uh, it's the land of national parks and we visit like uh, three to five national parks, which are uh, the most important ones are Ulanka, Kuntivara and Risituntori. And uh, the special thing about uh, those national parks is that they are very different. Um, Olanka is very, very nice because of, uh, of the forest and, and uh, the river that's going through that, uh, through that uh, national park. Uh, Kuntivara is more like, it feels like a fairy tale. We go with the uh, with the uh, snow scooters through it. And it's it's a really adventurous trip that day once we go uh, to the top of Kuntivara, where we see uh, we're almost reaching the, um, the border with Russia and you have a wonderful uh, scenery over there. But um, we also all, uh, try to try to work uh, or adapt the trip to Risi Tunturi uh, for to have very nice light and to catch the northern light, because on uh, on the walk uh, to Risi Tunturi there is a, um, an, a, a hut down there where we stay uh, and wait for uh, that the night falls and that we can work with uh, with the northern light. So we try to adapt on the weather to to plan in that trip, uh, which is wonderful. I saw one of the guests already burned high. Uh, and I remember we, we had a wonderful time together there and uh, we, uh, I'm quite sure uh, that was a very, very nice experience. So what can I tell more about Finland? You can tell a little bit about the fact that I, I've been traveling quite a lot actually and I've been uh, so many places where people would claim that this is the place to go to if you want to see northern light. But I have to say one thing in Finland, I have never seen anything stronger than up there. It's really amazing. Um, maybe something getting close to it could be Greenland or maybe Lofoten, but for sure, this is a wonderful place. So the northern light should be a, a, a thing that we would do as well when we go to Finland. And for those who want to know it, we have Finland on our program and it's in the month of May, March, and it's active from the 13th to the 20th of March. The next workshop is uh, with James Naden, where he was supposed to join us, but uh, of private reason, uh, he wasn't able, able to do it. But his workshop in, in Bangkok is based on um, on editorial photography and it's uh, uh, Around, a lot around street photography and also a workshop where, where those who will join us will have private fixes, uh, private assistance and so on because we really want to cover Bangkok in, in many different kinds of places and to be able to do so you will need people to, to know who knows around the areas, who knows how to speak the language and also how to get you inside uh, those different kind of places we want to go and visit. Um, one of uh, one of those things we would do is make a story around the Thai boxer and uh, get behind the scene. And we have uh, more than one place where we would go and spend uh, quite, you know a bit of a time together with those boxers to see how is how is the daily life. It's 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 not what you see. There's so many things behind this culture when it comes to Thai boxing, and we would try to cover that and also cover, cover other stories uh, together with James, who would do uh, 
uh, lectures in the evening about his own photography and also where you will uh, where he will showcase uh, his stories and all that he's for those who maybe don't know him that well you should go and looking up he's really one of those guys who uh, who have been taking uh, yeah been up in front with, with editorial photography and have more or less made a whole school around the way to approach uh, this kind of editorial photography um, again, ask if there's questions, not only for me, but to everyone who's here and is special for Hamid, because I know he, ha he has a dinner coming up, so suddenly you won't see him. So if you have questions, you should, you should just go ahead. But anyhow, I will go to the next workshop, which is actually the Faroe Island, and um, Faroe Island is in the month of May, and it's, it's a straightforward uh, landscape photography workshop uh, that I will run up there. And it will bring us to the, the most cool places uh, for, for everything from more straightforward uh, landscape photography, also to where we will define and work a lot with, the, with other uh, part of, 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 the, of the landscape that you will uh, visit when you get to the Fire Island. People very often ask me, will there be any rain up there? And I can guarantee you a lot of rain. I can guarantee you one thing, that would be rain for sure. But that's the whole thing is you have to be able to move around uh, when you're up there. And then of course, be able to find small places where you can do uh, all kind of photography. Um, those slides I just show you is from our catalog. Uh, go and, and, and also look in this catalog for more uh, pictures from the workshop. And uh, we will even update those catalogs along the way. But Ferry Island is from the 1st to the 8th of May uh, for those who would like to explore this wonderful place. This workshop here, I will run through it fast again. It's the Netherlands and it's together with the, with the Dutch photographer, uh, Lars van de Groel. And it's all about trees. Um, and when, when, when we, we actually was designing this workshop, I said, you can spend a whole week taking photos of trees, only speaking. But um, I guarantee you, th this is this is if you get into this thing to look at trees, how the reflection is in water, how the, the spin around the child, it's actually pretty cool. I have to say so. I, I, I spent one week last year and it was really a lot of fun. And uh, Lars is, is a cool guy. He's he uh, he's just like Trump. He became a Hasselblad master with his photography. And um, he, has, he has this uh, philosophy that his, his landscape photography should be a, a bit like painting like the Dutch photographers. And for sure, I think it, it is. Um, the next one brings us to one of those places that I really like myself. And before I go ahead with it, I just would let you know that the workshop in the Netherlands is also from the 1st to 8th of my May. Online on our YouTube channels, there's, there's a film from our last workshop in the Netherlands, just like there's other workshop films that bring you behind the scenes and give you more inspiration about our workshop in general terms. And uh, as said before, our other lectures would be online. You will get a link uh, to those. Talk about Greenland, there's also on our YouTube channels more than one film from, from Greenland because we have been there many times. And um, I don't want to claim it's, it's, it's our backyard, but I can guarantee you we, we, we know every little corner of, of those places up there. And I couldn't be more happy than introduce Tom because he's going to run the workshop. And, um, and I actually going to join in as well as an assistant for Tom. But a long story short, Tom, maybe you would just in a few words introduce us to this wonderful place in Greenland, in the city. Yeah, okay. Uh... Well, what the nice thing about Greenland or the workshop in Greenland with better moments at my point of view is uh, it's, it's, I think it's the best way to travel in, in, in a group over there. Uh, there are two big reasons to, to join a group. And that's uh, first of all, you, you're joining in, 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 we have our own private boat for the boat tours. So we can decide wherever we, we were sailing around the, the icebergs and uh, yeah, we, we are completely in control what we are doing. The same thing, uh, it's optional, but uh, then again, if you do a helicopter tour, helicopters are crazy expensive in Greenland. 
And uh, if you join it in a group, you can share the costs, uh, which makes it possible to, to make nice aerial uh, pictures. This is an example, what you see here, of an, an aerial picture. But even then, uh, the boat tours are magnificent. It's, it's, uh, it's really, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's really a fairy tale where, where you enter in. Um, but also working from the shore, uh, from the shoreline, uh, close to the water, you have wonderful formations and rocks uh, to work with. So it's easy to spend a week over there and even longer for me. And um, yeah, if you're lucky, you can have Northern Light as well, especially in May. We were lucky uh, last uh, Greenland trip in, in October. We had a lot of um, Northern Light. So yeah, this is more or less uh, Greenland in, in, in a few words. Yeah. Talking about uh, Greenland and Northern Light, in the month of May, we will, I can guarantee you that, that we will sadly not see any northern light because uh, the, the period of time we go there, which is the best from my point of view, is actually where you have more or less 24 hour sun up there. Mm -hmm. The sun will, will go up around uh, one o'clock, two o'clock in the, in the morning and then go around and then it's, it's light. It's just like that. So we can do so much photography uh, the whole day. And it's, 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 it's even this very soft light as well. So the month of May is, is a perfect time to go there. Um, just not just only for, for the lighting and all that, which is of course a very, very important part, but actually also because it's out of season. We always go to Greenland and wherever we go, we always try to be there where there's no people because we want to have it all by ourselves. And as some, Tom said, it's uh, it's a lot of photography from from our boat as well, and depending the whole COVID situation because that's that's the elephant in the in the glass shop these days. Uh, we will move as much as we can up there because we are planning also to stay over in, in other places than Ilulissat. But to be realistic and straightforward, we may stay in Ilulissat the whole week, depending uh, what is possible and not possible. The helicopter is on the side, and I. I actually would say that that go there without uh, a tour over there. The inland tides is, is, yeah, do it when you're there. <laughs> um, Christian, before you move on, I can see we've had a couple of questions in the chat, uh, specifically related to the Greenland uh, workshop. Uh, the first of which is what role do a phase one explorer play in the workshop? Uh, what do they provide the participants with? Yeah. Okay. We, we would, I would, I would divide this uh, answer up in two because Tom, he, he can explain a little bit about how we run workshops with the uh, phase one. They, they have uh, their um, software, which Tom is, is really cool and know a lot about. But in, when we talk about equipment, what we do is that uh, three, four weeks before the workshop, um, our guests will receive an invitation for which kind of equipment they would like to, to have on this workshop. And when they get to Copenhagen, because uh, as it is today, maybe when we get uh, to the month of May, it, it's a bit different, you, uh, but as it is today, you can, you can only fly from Copenhagen. And uh, we will pick up the equipment in Copenhagen. Everybody will get the equipment, the boxes with the, with, uh, the newest equipment uh, that we, phase one half actually, uh, all the lenses uh, which they have produced as well. So the, the answer in very short terms is that you will get a box, in that box you'll have a body and it will be the new body. Uh, they have uh, two new systems actually who came up last year that we will bring and you will also have a certain kind of lenses. And of course, uh, we may even just share some of the lenses because there's no reason to bring mm -hmm. too much mm -hmm. equipment. It's heavy like 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 that, yeah. and um, and we will also for those who is, who is traveling in maybe one to two, two days before the workshop and stay in Copenhagen, we will actually invite them for free Copenhagen uh, explore trip, which is actually where we go and take pictures around Copenhagen with the assistant, and people can work out and try out the equipment. Uh, but more in details around that. Uh, so you will, people will get, the, I guarantee you, the best equipment you can think about. 
and it's all uh, uh, all the insurance is actually made by uh, phase one. Mm-hmm. When we are running the workshop, when when you have the have the equipment yourself uh, in Copenhagen, as I believe you you probably have to cover itself, but it's it's what should happen, not in really. A long story short, a uh, lot of equipment for sure. And Tom, he will run workshops around uh, the software. Maybe you just say some few words about that, Tom. Yeah, well, um, Capture One, it has a extremely lot of possibilities. And I'm a, a phase one or Capture One user since version one. So mm-hmm. uh, I saw the, the evolution of the software uh, from day one till, uh, till we till we re- where we are now. So um, all questions you have about uh, catalogs or uh, sessions or uh, whatever in the software, you name it, I can try to help you in the first place. I can show you how I use the software because I use it like for all my work, almost like 99%. There is hardly no Photoshop in my in my style or in, or in my way of working. And uh, yeah, like Christian said, it's, it's, it's a big, big... Uh, um, plus point for to have all that equipment uh, for free actually it's it's included so uh, it's uh, it's yeah ex- expensive gear to to buy and it's a wonderful uh, uh, to 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 be able to use it during that workshop yeah <clears throat> and just a little i will add it just a little bit about that online um, actually ben when you're sending out uh, our mail tonight I would like you to put the link to the to the um, to the last film we had. We made this this summer in in um, Greenland with mm. the testimonials with uh, David Murray, who was working actually with Phase One equipment, where where you actually get a little story behind uh, how he was using the equipment. Yeah. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, we also had a question from Michael just regarding the Greenland trip. He says, is it land or boat based? What is, sorry? The Greenland trip, is it land based or are you traveling around by boat between different destinations? Uh, it's, it's a combination because um, we, we want, if it's possible, as I said before, it, it, it's actually a bit difficult these days, but our ambition is that we will we go to Ilucet and from Ilucet we will go to the Disco Island and spend one to two nights over there. If we don't mm-hmm. go there, there's another very cool place. So it, it will be a combination of uh, we're staying in Ilucet, which at, at the best hotel uh, in the Ghana location. And then we have boat tours uh, and then uh, so that's it. it. It's not a cruise ship. Oh. And uh, we, we do have those concepts as well, but that then it would be uh, like the Svalbard, Michael, he should look at. Um, but but I actually, only speaking, if you want to go to Greenland and you want to do high-end landscape photography, um, I think the way we're doing it is the best because we have private boats up there and we can get just, so maybe you could just tell a little bit, just a few words about how we do that. I mean, it's that's a highlight for all of us. Uh, the boat tours are, are for me are, are most uh, most incredible and, and the highlights of, of, of the trip because these boat tours uh, we, we choose to go uh, at, the, at the best time of the day so we have the best light and um, yeah you're free to you're free to sail to we, we can choose the, the the icebergs that we want sorry um, no, so this is a this is for me the yeah, the best thing of, of the Greenland trip is is, is the boaters. But even then, the other things are are, are as nice as well. Um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. And and just to add in just one little thing about Greenland, and then we can uh, talk over the next slide, is that if, if you want to add in more days in Greenland, let us know. We can organize that as well. Uh, which probably is, 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 is a good, uh, smart move to do since now Greenland is not around the corner for many of us. So uh, when you're there, maybe we should add in an extra day and stuff like that. But we can for sure organize that. Also, when as long when you sign up, you have no application, but we pre-book actually our flights on behalf of you because 
we want to make sure we can get the whole way to Ildeset, uh, all of us. You can go back to that question later. Should we do that, Ben? Of course. Yeah. More questions? No, that's it for now. I was just going to say, uh, have an eye on the time because I know CISA has to uh, has to head off reasonably yes, soon. Yeah. Perfect. So anyhow, yeah. here we are in Italy, Il Palio. Again, this is online as well. Go and take a look. It's uh, a Marco Di Lauro workshop, uh, and it's based on this yearly uh, horse event, which is very, very unique. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is something very special, and I wish uh, Marco just could have put some of his own words on this. And thanks God he can do that, because go to our seminars, and there's a whole seminar by Marco Di Lauro where he's telling about this workshop as well and how his philosophy is behind this kind of photography, which is a combination of, of um, yeah, street photography and all those things that happens behind the scene when you have such an event. I will run through an, a quick other thing. It's our Kenya workshop here uh, that will be run um, late on, and it's in, in the end of August, where, where you will have the opportunity to see the big migration in Kenya, and it together with a French photographer, uh, Lawrence Barraus, who, uh, who do black and white photography uh, in, a, in his own uh, raw way, so to speak. Um, then we have uh, our classic Iceland, which is um, from in September. And it's also including some phase one equipment, if you like that, and it's exactly the same condition as a Greenland, that before the workshop, you make a list and we do our very best together with phase one to provide you with that equipment. And if we at that time, is, is things are more uh, back to normal in regard of logistic, then we would actually prefer to send the equipment to you private at home. So you have it maybe two or three weeks before the workshop so you can train with the equipment so when you go to, to the destination, you know how to work with it. And um, we got to explore uh, great places as we always do. And this is also including a helicopter workshop. If you want to join in, we, we organize that as well. And it, it's on the side because my experience is that some like this, this opportunity and other don't. So that's an option, but yeah, up to you, I would do it. Lofoten is, is Tom again, and I can, I can just uh, shortly introduce you to this wonderful part of the world. It's, it's uh, for those who have not been there, I really think Lofoten is a cool place. Um, it's, 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 it has this reputation that's getting busy with people out there, but only speaking those times I've been there, that it's, it's not that many, I've been other places where you were like, wow, it's just like, the nature on a busy evening. So Lofoten is, is a cool place to go. A lot of northern light and a lot of landscape. And so maybe in few words, you should also just add in a little bit about uh, Lofoten as well. Well, um, yeah, it's it's an amazing peninsula. Uh, it's, it's actually all different kinds of peninsula and, and islands, uh, one after another. So the nice thing is you can drive around with your car over there and uh, go from spot to spot. And every beach or every corner has, has its special views. And uh, especially the, the peaks of, uh, of, of the mountains are, are so, so unique. And uh, also the colorful houses and uh, who are very popular. And I know there are millions of pictures of them, uh, but still it's, uh, it's, it's photogenic and you can, you can try to make nice and interesting things. And uh, it's always a challenge to go over, to go to places who are sometimes, uh, uh, some spots who are a lot photographed, but I, I, yeah, it's, it's a nice combination. You, you can go to these spots, but you can try to find the hidden games as well over there. I'm quite sure about that, yeah. And, um... What I also like about uh, Lofoten is the fact that this is one of those few places that is just as strong in black and white than in color. Actually, some, sometimes it's, it's actually a bit stronger in black and white, only speaking. But uh, long story short, it, it's a cool place for landscape where you can make this combination. 
But for sure, talking about colors, now actually for me, uh, it's, sorry. Yeah, I, I love to work uh, at, at the seaside. I live and I'm born and raised at the seaside. So for me, I really like to work there. It's a rough sea and it's sometimes very rough conditions, but you know, the, the, the results are, are, are so, so amazing. So uh, yeah, sometimes you need to be, you need to work hard, but, but it, it will pay off, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, it, I, I believe every word you said. I, I think it's it's uh, it is from the. It, I think I believe I, I actually agree one hundred percent with you. It is from the the shoreline things happening. Uh, it the most of it. I know if you're extremely ambitious, uh, but we we don't have time to that. I, I know people actually have been climbing up the mountains around uh, Lofoten and stayed over in a very simple tent to get up in the morning and get the mountains and all that. But um, we don't do that. It's it's it would be very demanding to do so. But uh, but Lofoten have so much to offer. Again, go online and find more of, of all those beautiful things. Check our catalog. You can download them and get all the inspiration. Even if you don't want to go to Lofoten, just it's it's a beautiful catalog with all Trump's great pictures. And now, no more discussion about color because she she will bring mm -hmm. you to the most colorful place I can think about. Hello, right. Cesar. Hello. Welcome on board. You've been Thank sitting you, there. Thank you, Christian. But yeah. here we are. Oh, I, Good to yeah. see you. Thank you. Uh, happy to be here. And hello from Scotland uh, to everybody. I can see there are lots of good friends there. And um, I am happy that we are going to do the Morocco workshop again because a mixture of street photography and uh, landscape and color photography, you know, like it, it, this This happens to be Casablanca um, and in Edith Piaf's favorite uh, uh, restaurant. But it, the, whole, the whole thing about Morocco is colors and, and how you, you run into it in Fez. I, I mean, it is, it, it is a spectacle and it is wonderful. We, we travel and when we travel in, in, um, in the bus, because that's what we will do, then uh, I teach at the same time because we have to move from place to place. And um, that has worked out really wonderfully um, through, uh, through the, the past uh, workshops. It, it, it is a, an amazing little extra tool uh, instead of just sitting there and looking out over the landscape. And um, I really take great the pride in expanding all the different students' uh, horizon, the, their photography, open, open up the door, the visual door for everybody, whatever, uh, whatever level you are on uh, when you come in. I, I really, I really don't care as such. And as a matter of fact, I think it's really cool if you if you have not tried very much to, to do photography before, lifting you up to a whole new level. I, I want to lift everybody up to a whole new level. Step up on the visual step ladder. That's what we are going to do together. And um, Morocco is a perfect place for it. And, and uh, you, you do the street photography with whatever camera it is of your choice. Um, and um, it is, it is a, a gem of its own. It sparkles all the way. And, and I would like to add in because I have been trying with you, Sis, and you, you do oh. really a, a cool uh, workshop in the evening where you're discussing mm -hmm. also a lot about uh, the photo taken during the day, uh, as we all do, but you get very deep into all to, to mm -hmm. small things that only speaking, I don't even consider uh, when I'm looking at my own pictures or other pictures. You really you have mm -hmm. this very detail orientation and also in regard of the color. And yes. maybe I should I should let people know that I don't know anyone who has been doing so many stories from National Geographic that you have done. So <laughs> that's yeah. probably what, what goes yeah. into the whole Chubang. Uh -huh. I, um, yeah. I had looked forward to see Jim Nockway also because he's a colleague yeah. of mine from the Geographic. That would have been fun. I haven't seen Jim for years right now, so that would have been great. But yeah, 
that will have to time. wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. And as Cesar just said, that a lot of workshop would be done uh, during the transportation, which is a, a smart move because why sitting there and do no nothing oh. where we can discuss our pictures and all that. Yes, yeah, yeah, it really it really works very well. And, and meet the, the different people of Morocco, the Berbers and uh, going out to the desert. And then, oh, I, I, I love being in Marrakesh. Uh, it, it's, it's just basically amazing. I get, I get excited just sitting here in Scotland and thinking about Morocco. It, um, it is a beautiful place. Yeah. And I would say, as I said, repeating myself a little bit but spoil yourself go online uh, download the catalog from morocco because so many great mm -hmm. pictures uh, from Cesar's mm -hmm. hand is in that catalog mm -hmm. and get a lot of inspiration there's uh, all kind of stuff there's even a quick guide uh, to some of the places we're going to mm -hmm. and uh, as we said before don't hear a change, just ask us questions, send us emails. Yeah. Some will just forward uh, to, it could be sister or whoever, mm -hmm. Trump or Anna also, uh, because the, you probably would like to uh, get answer of some of those questions that we cannot answer mm -hmm. you. But Morocco is, is really a cool, uh, cool place. Indochina. Question, just just yeah. to, in yeah. between. Um, I just want to say I'm sitting here and looking at all these pictures and all these different places and it's like sign me up you have so many different uh, <laughs> workshops it's really beautiful can I be your assistant. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I would be my own assistant as well. <laughs> I wish I could just go traveling. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Thank you so much. Lisa. I'm hopefully I mean, we're trying to, to cover all the corners here, so that should mm. be something for, for all of us. And uh, another workshop is uh, our Indochina workshop that have been postponed actually as many other workshops due to this stupid situation out there. And it's, it's there's only few seats left if there's any actually. So if anybody wants to join Indochina, they should all let me know uh, with short notice, but, um, but that's how it is. Going back to CIS and Morocco, it's from the 7th to the 16th of October. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a great time as well. It's not too hot and it's not too mm -hmm. cold, actually, because yeah. I know you go through the mountains uh, and other places in Morocco, but, mm -hmm. um, but it can be uh, fairly hot. Yeah. Indochina is a... Yeah. Ben, are there any questions running in the background? No, no questions yet, Christian. Uh, you carry okay. on for now. Okay, cool. Uh, Asia... Finds Mega is the Indochina workshop where we actually a combination of, of layers. Uh, it's a combination of layers, Cambodia and Thailand, and then where we also go by by a boat down Mekong River. Cesar was talking about before in Morocco how you do your workshops when you're driving. In this case, we do it uh, from those boats when we are sailing because we will go for a whole day and why not uh, do photography from the boat, but also do workshops uh, and so on. Um, Luing Papang is one of those places we're going to. This shot is in rainy weather uh, from, from there. Thank God we have Bhutan and we have Sisse. Because yeah. Bhutan is, is, is absolutely one of your favorite places. I know that. And we've been there together, Christian. We, yeah, that's the, true. The, the, the first uh, Bhutan yeah. workshop was for you. Yeah. And then the second one where I think actually it was like, hitting it out of the ballpark. It was the most amazing workshop I have ever had. It mm. was just wonderful. Again, it's a, a mixture of, of uh, visiting the monasteries, the, the dongs, and then uh, you go in there. And, and I, I'm sure everybody knows about Bhutan and their happiness and and uh, uh, about how friendly the people are there. It's, it's, it's pretty unbelievable. If you are kind of a little bit hesitant 
about people photography, um, it will fall by the wayside when you go to Bhutan because they are they are so forthcoming, and not not a peep. You 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 can do street photography with no qualms, and and you can you can uh, sit in front of a, a, a man who's uh, reading the scripture. This is actually a very unusual picture because normally you cannot get to do that. But he was sitting in a private uh, worshipping place and and we were invited in there um, which was amazing it was it, it was a wonderful day where we got to spend uh, the whole day out in a village we had not planned to do that but um, the the guide inviting invited us to his parents village and and boy was that an amazing thing it was just really wonderful hmm. we got we got great food. The, the guide's mother cooked for all of us, and and uh, and it was just uh, it was such a treat, both culturally and visually, and um, it, it just it, it was one of those days where everything came together. And it just <laughs> fantastic. So, yeah, it, yeah, Bhutan is is also a, a true gem to photograph, really. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm. uh -huh. colors just all all of it. And for, for quite many, this it's called tiger nest is 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 a highlight. Um, uh -huh. Well, you, do you, do just you have stewards around that. No, do I don't think so. No, I, I should have okay. done that. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, then let's just return. Yeah, tiger's nest uh, is uh, is a. a a really uh, wonderful experience. It is a demanding hike. There is no qualms about that. Uh, and uh, if you then decide uh, halfway up that you don't want to go all the way, there is a wonderful restaurant uh, and, and place where you can spend some time photographing people there. They are on their way up to the monastery to Tiger's Nest. Um, and uh, otherwise, when you get up there, the reward is seeing tiger's nest hanging on a cliff side. Mm. Uh, it, it, it just uh, spectacular with with the mountains behind it and uh, and prayer flags in the foreground. So it's it's it, it's out of out of this world, and into Bhutan. Bhutan is really really special. I'm so happy. Yeah, no, yeah several. Yeah, I agree. It, it is yeah. really a unique place. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's to you know how, how to explain it. We have to go there, but it's true. It's it's really yeah. really a, a wonderful. And people are uh -huh. so nice as well. Yeah. And just to to finish it off with Chaganes, I remember that mm -hmm. some when we were on our uh, out yeah. there together, there was people actually uh, going to a bit of the way up to Chaganes by horse. But uh -huh. as I remember, uh, it looks a little bit dangerous for me. So I think we should just walk slowly up there. Yeah. And there's even a very nice restaurant uh, where you can just actually, well, there's a beautiful view. So if you don't want to walk the, yeah. the whole way up, you can uh -huh. watch it from the restaurant uh, with a cof cup of coffee and some nice lunch. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's lovely. Yeah. And, um, and again, yeah. yeah. And again, what was it something about? Bhutan? It would be that Bhutan is the month of October. And mm -hmm. for those who have been mm -hmm. in, in that part of Asia before, you will know that this is the best time to, to the weather is very clear. That's where you have this very yeah. dark blue heaven and you can uh -huh. look as long as you, if you want to go and see uh, the mountains of Himalaya, that is, you will always mm -hmm. go to, in, in that kind mm -hmm. of period of time. Um, so that's really cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. And question, yeah. Let me see. I think that's that's yeah, it, except I, for for Svalbard, for, and that's when I become yeah. a wildlife photographer, which I do too, and I love that too. So um, don't worry about it. But I will have to leave you right now. Goodbye, well, thank everybody, you, Susan. and and yeah. uh, happy holidays to everybody. Um, hope that you have a wonderful time, and uh, let not uh, the horrible virus get you. Okay. So see you later. Happy New Year. Thank you. Susan. Absolutely. You too. Isis, thank you for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I, mm -hmm. There was some questions, Ben. Is that right? Or is it just... That is that is right. Yeah, there was a quick one uh, from Michael uh, regarding the trip, just asking if there would be any temple festivals going on 
during that time. I don't know if you could help with that, Christian. Yeah, uh, uh, there's there's actually quite many uh, festivals in um, in Bhutan in general mm -hmm. terms, and um, and each time we have a workshop uh, in Bhutan, we always try to uh, aim it for a period of time where you have a festival. Mm -hmm. uh, but it should not be the, the overall driver to go to uh, to Bhutan because mm -hmm. it depending, of course, uh, which kind of photography and explanation, uh, how you would like to explore the country of Bhutan. But you can literally go to great places uh, at the monasteries where you have the same kind of photography act. We have a lot of monks and you have a lot of things going on during the day where they are doing the praying and so on. And um, and there is, as I, start, as I said before, there's always a kind of a festival. It could also be, uh, be simple things like um, people, uh, there's dancing festivals as well. There's many festivals actually. So my, my answer is I don't know in this very moment and uh, but but there would be a lot of nice things going on uh, mm -hmm. anyhow. Yeah, Anna, so good to have you th right there. I've been looking at you for such a long time. Yeah. Um, thank you for okay. taking your time, join us tonight, and thank you very very much because you want to bring us all to Cuba, one of those places I've never been. I've been so many places, but never in Cuba. So. Take me and the rest of us for for Cuba uh, adventure. Okay, uh, so uh, maybe just for the beginning, I will in quickly introduce myself. I've been photojournalist for the last thirty four years, uh, still very active. I just came back last four uh, two weeks ago from Syria and Iraq, working on post war with ISIS uh, stories there. So I'm still very, very active in this field. Actually, I'm active in more fields. So um, I'm, uh, I published my first story uh, in National Geographic USA in 2007. And then uh, shortly after I was invited to become a photo editor of National Geographic uh, edition, Slovenia, Slovene edition. So I'm working as a photo editor for the last uh, 15, 15 years now. Uh, why I'm telling you this, because I think it's a very useful uh, uh, to work with somebody like with the experience that I have in editing stories, editing different photos, stories uh, in the way that National Geographic is doing it. So I really do have a lot of experience in this. Uh, I also teach photography in three universities. Um, so uh, two private one state. So I have a lot of students. Uh, so I do have experience in teaching. Definitely, I do. I can say this, and this I'm doing for the last, I think, 12 years, something like this. Uh, and for the last 18 years, I'm organizing my own uh, workshops. So I joined uh, Better Moments, uh, maybe also because of that later, uh, what, two, three years ago. Um, so uh, I do have experience also in this. What, how I work, that what, what you can expect. First of all, I always take with me on every workshop around the world, I always take a projector. So we have evening screenings of for different photos. Uh, depends uh, what the, the group likes, or is it basics, or is it advanced uh, techniques? And then the, by the end of the trip, uh, we are, of course, um, looking at the, the photos that the, 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 the participant did and we comment them. Uh, so it's very good. I, I, I believe this is a very good way of teaching so that you can see photos that somebody else did on the same spot. Uh, and it's sometimes completely different than yours. And uh, you can really learn a lot uh, through, this, uh, through this technique. And with the nice uh, screening, it's much easier than just watching in some laptop uh, screen. So I always do this. Um, Cuba is, organi is organized a bit differently. Why? Because during all these years of experience with, with, with workshops, I, I realized that the best thing is not to, not move, not to, move, not to move too much during the workshop. So we stay, basically stay 
couple of days in Havana and a couple of days in Trinidad. With this, you gain really a lot. Why? You don't pack in the morning to check out and uh, go to a bus and then spend the whole day on the bus. And then in the evening when it's nice light, you come to a next hotel, you check in, you're tired and so, and so on. If you stay two, three nights in the same hotel, it's much better to work. We can have evening screenings, uh, a lot of discussions. Uh, you don't have to pack. As I said, you can um, fill up the batteries, the computer, you can work on post-production and stuff like this. So uh, it's more photography. The less you travel, actually, it's more photography. So it's not, um, maybe it's not a trip for somebody who really wants to see all Cuba. We won't see all Cuba. We will see the most, of course, the most interesting and the most visually interesting spots, but um, we have time uh, to take pictures. Uh, and also what is very important, I always work with my, my partner, my colleague. Uh, she's also a professor for photo, Photoshop on the university. That's how we met. Um, so in the evenings, by request, we can also have some basics or even advanced techniques of post-production. Uh, so, because I believe today, and everybody knows this, today, a photo with us po without post-production, it's, it's, you very, you rarely see a photo without being uh, a bit post-productive, as I say. So uh, we have then double, we have practical knowledge and we have uh, theoretical knowledge, plus, of course, the beautiful environment. I've been in Cuba for the first time in 91. Uh, so it's 30 years now. And then a couple of times uh, I've been with groups. Um, uh, and the last time I was with the Better Moment uh, workshop group. And I believe they were, they were quite happy with it, as, as they say. <laughs> So that is what you can expect from Cuba. But I know that he was very happy because uh, you made a lot of great stuff down there. And uh, just so I can remember it, again, go to our YouTube channel. There's actually a film behind the scenes where you can see uh, not only you, but also the guests working with, with their camera. And another thing that I, I would like to add in, I have two things I would like to, to add in here, is that one thing is that, as Anna said, that when you go to a place like Cuba and it's around photography, you will work hard. I mean, if you want to go there to see all, all those things that's on, on your book, you should actually do it after the workshop or before the workshop. And why, why not just spoil yourself when you go to a workshop like all our workshops actually, go there some few days before, it costs no nothing, hotels are cheap and you can uh, hire a local guide or we can help you out with that as well. But I would definitely do that. And I do it myself uh, if I go, if, if Anna invited me to Cuba, I would actually go there a few days all by myself because I won't want to see some things that's on my list. So I suggest all of you to do the same. That's a very good way to, to travel. Uh, yeah, another I thing- I can just add something, uh, Christian. Uh, I yeah. also do the same thing. I come two, two, two days before and I always stay longer when the, most of the mm -hmm. group is gone. Uh, and uh, some who wants to stay longer, they are invited. We could maybe even still do something together, not at that extent as a workshop, but maybe consulting or just seeing each other uh, and, uh, and, and continuing the work uh, kind of. Super, yeah. That's, that's a very, I really suggest everyone who, who wants to join in to, to take that over because, um, yeah. And, and the last question for you, Anne, is that last year, you brought uh, some flash equipment, so you you actually had some sessions in the evening where you were doing uh, oh, yeah, portraits yeah, with forgot, the flash. Yeah. About that, yeah. Sorry, uh, I worked no for long uh, for many years already with the Pro Photo uh, flashlights. Also in my studio, I have a really beautiful studio for studio photography back here, back home, just next door. Uh, but on trips, I take uh, battery powered uh, Pro Photo like uh, B1. Uh, B1X, B2, uh, stuff like this, with a lot of um, light uh, modificators, like soft boxes, uh, beauty dish, um, yeah, barns, stuff like that. So we always do one or two sessions, uh, like, like it should be like a studio session. Then uh, we get a, a guy or a girl 
uh, to pose, uh, so we can really spend some time uh, uh, constructing the light. And it's very easy in Cuba, it's really easy. You have fantastic palaces from the 50s, um, and then you can always find a place which is extremely beautiful, and then you have a nice model and uh, professional uh, lighting. And I think it is very useful for uh, most of the, the, the participants of the workshop. Perfect. Again, question, please just ask away. And uh, when Ben is looking at that, I will quickly run through the Philippines. Um, James should have been online together with us. James is based in, in Tokyo. And lucky him, he got an assignment yesterday. So he flew out yesterday as well. And, um, and the thing is that the, the, the kind of, there's some certain rules in that part of Asia right now. So he needed to, to rush out. But anyway, I will do his presentation. Um, um, this, this Philippines is a cool place where you go actually, and we call it Pearl Hunters, where we go around the islands and uh, would explore great places and get very close to how is actually how they grow pearls in, in, in the Philippines. And it's, it's a combination of um, a lot of traveling. We go behind, we go from one island to another, either by boats or I think there's also airplanes involved in these workshops. And you can really explore a lot of stuff out there. It's really cool stuff. And James have been uh, traveling quite a lot in that area. So he, he's, I can think about a stronger guy like him to, to bring us around. Um, again, please go online, uh, look at this, also this workshop here, if you like. And um, the catalog is there. And so am I, just drop me questions or whatever, and I will gladly help you out uh, with anything that's around that. That brings us back to where we started, Mongolia, but we've already been through that workshop. Uh, and um, uh, this this whole uh, session we have made together, this presentation would be online. So if somebody was missing out this part, uh, you can actually just go and watch it later tonight. We send you a link to our YouTube channel. Namibia is is one of those wonder wonderlands out there waiting for all of us. And um, Tom is running our workshop where we're going uh, into the desert. We could call it, as he said, a spear of the desert, but it's, it's more than that. Only speaking, when you've been in Namibia, the desert is, of course, uh, a main player when you go to a country like Namibia. But I, I believe there's way more to offer in, in Namibia. And that's why we should let Tom explain a little bit about his workshop in uh, Namibia. Yeah, OK. So. Uh... <clears throat> Nam Namibia is very diverse and um, every hour when you're driving the, the scenery is changing and that's why uh, the, the tricky part about Namibia is you can drive and drive and drive and, and don't find the time to photograph so you need to be smart on that and find some good spots who are not too far from each other because um, I'm talking about days and days drive if you go from north to, to south, of course. So that's why we, 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 we have chosen to, to stay in, in more or less the center area, which is quite big still. But uh, from there on, um, we, we have like uh, very, very diverse uh, sceneries. So, uh, for example, we go uh, we go to Spitzkoppen, which is a wonderful spot for um, for um, big boulders, typically for 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 Namibia, uh, which we we can combine with uh, northern uh, northern light, uh, Milky Way photography. <laughs> no more drugs to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and star photography, of course. But even if we go to uh, to the coastline, uh, we 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 can uh, we plan over there to to do some aerial photography. And the aerial photography on in, in this spot um, is close to Alves Bay. And if you if you um, fly over there, you have immediately a combination of 
three totally different sceneries. In, in one flight, you go over salt pans, you go over uh, sand dunes, you fly over the ocean, you see flamingos. So this is really a wonderful highlight. Uh, but of course, uh, we go to the Sausage uh, Vlay with the famous Dead Vlay. The image you see here is, is one that I made over there. And this is made uh, uh, in foggy conditions. Most of the pictures you see over there are, are bright blue skies, which are nice. But for me as an art photographer, I always looking, uh, searching for completely different and, and like picturesque work. Um, this, this, um, this series that I've made, who is called Banguela, was typically in that, in that foggy weather. It's, it's very rare, but even if it's not foggy, you can do amazing things over there. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful spot. I really like it. More. Uh, yeah, here, I, you know, I always tell to, to the guests, you won't see a lot of uh, pictures from me with, with hard blue, uh, blue skies. And uh, for, in Namibia, you have a lot, especially when, when after sunrise, uh, one hour, two hours, you can have hard, very hard light with, with blue skies. And then it's smart to, to convert them to black and white, make, make nice, because you have hard contrasts. We work with that contrast. I show how to work, how you can influence these, uh, these black and whites and, and, and how to make your nice contrasts in, 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 in Capture One and so on. And I would like to add it because I just spent uh, almost three weeks in Namibia uh, searching for, for different kind of stuff. And I, I was actually visiting those hotels we're gonna stay at and let me put it this way this is absolutely a cool cool workshop if when it comes to hotel hospitality uh, we have a local partner out there uh, francois who is we have been working with for many years and he has been arranging the most i mean i have i now let me be straightforward i've been traveling a lot i've seen so many beautiful places but those places out there he have picked up for us is, is something really out of this world you can even um, I would claim that you can just take your photos out of your hotel room because it's right there on the location uh, and that's all the all our places actually. So um, that's, that's actually a, a, a very unique the way how they treat how they help us the, the staff uh, they follow us and they, they they really spoil us with 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 wonderful lunches in the most amazing spots you can imagine so it's yeah that's a big, yeah. big effort, yeah. Yeah, I have to say that that you, this is this is really, this is something for, for all of us who like to have nice food and, and a nice a nice hospitality. A short presentation of this workshop. This is with uh, the one with with Tom is actually uh, I have it right here. It's Namibia. With Tom is from the twenty to the twenty seventh of November. A quick run through this with Stil Curry, who was actually supposed to run in the month of February. We have postponed it because the situation in Bangkok these days is, is, is really just like uh, many other places. So instead, instead of uh, trying to, to force ourselves, then we have postponed it and the new days would be launched. But for those who, who still want to join us, there is some few spots left because we have been changing the dates forth and back. So there's an opening uh, for, for those who would like to join this workshop. But as said, um, I don't have the dates in place now yet. Steve and I, we will discuss it uh, um, yeah, in a few weeks from now on when we all have a more clear uh, picture about it. But once again, this is a wonderful workshop for all of you who is a big fan of Macari and also a big fan of, of his, his style of portrait photography in and around Bangkok. We are working together with a really, really cool uh, fixer, as it's called in this business, who have been working with Steve for many years and um, try to look at this, this program we have online because it's, it's, it's actually very unique. 
And um, I know quite many will, will claim that, oh, Bangkok, I've been to Bangkok many times. What can I do? What can I see? But this is, you will see part, you will see Bangkok in a way you have never seen it before, I can guarantee you. And um, and those who have been traveling with, with Makari before also know if you go to Burma, it's the same story that, that you would think you would see all those play, all those places you have in the book, or as Arne said, that if you want to do unique photography, you don't go those places, you really get behind the scenes, you go behind the market, you go to all those places that uh, you normally can get to. And we will do that together with Steve and our local people who will work for us. Sisa just showed, talked about Svalbard. I will just show you some, some clips from Svalbard. And only speaking, all cruise ship, and this is global, is really in, in a difficult situation. So uh, this is inspiration for all of you. And uh, if you wanna join us for, for Svalbard, it would be 223. And if you have that on your list, do it. Uh, we have been there many times and I can guarantee you, we can really uh, pull up some very cool stuff. Even Tom once joined me to Svalbard as a guest with his wife and family. And they had a great tour and a lot of adventure. Uh, especially because our ship got stranded and a lot of things happened. This was true adventure, and that is what Svalbard is. It is really, really adventure. A long story short, all those pictures is Sisa, who have been there God knows how many times with National Geographic, which she's working for. So Sisa will be running that workshop, and you can get a lot of inspiration. The last slides I will show you is a workshop that will be online and it will be uh, launches this year as well. And my plan is to, to do it um, before uh, the, the, the workshop with Tom, which I will join as well and be assistant for Tom. But up to that workshop, for those who want to uh, combine it with the, with the tribe photography, they can join in where uh, I will run a workshop uh, where we go to uh, among many tribes, uh, the Himpas, and as you can see here, which is the local Bushman. Uh, the Bushman is is, um, is is the most fantastic people I've met so far. I've been uh, doing a lot of photography around tribes, but those wonderful people is, is something really special to, to explore if you have the chance. And that's what this workshop is about, is 100% only uh, for, 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 the, um, for the tribes, for those tribes that you normally can visit. Uh, in Namibia, there's, there's actually quite many places you can just go there and there would be somebody will make up an event for you. But uh, what I will do and what I just did, I just spent three weeks, is bring it to the border up to Angola and other places where I guarantee you there haven't been a choice for many, many years. Um, the Bushman is, is uh, some of those people we will visit and we can we will go and stay with them. This is uh, another tribe called the Himpas in, in uh, living uh, quite many places in a small village. And uh, my, my kind of photography and my way of approaching those people is actually we will go there early in the morning and we will bring uh, local food uh, for the tribe. And we will discuss with the, with, the, with the man in charge of the village if we can do photography or not. And normally we, we will be allowed to do so, but we will really do it in a cool, gentle way. It's not a brutal way where we just go there with a bus and we jump on board and take pictures and go home again and you will dance for us. That's not how we will do it. We will go there and we will spend all the time we need to do. And we will even in some situation need to leave um, the area where, where, this, where the village is because the man may be in the mountains with the cattle and so on. So it, it, it's a workshop we will really just move around uh, where we can find the best opportunities for our photography. And um, with that in mind, then that would be the last, uh, the last workshop to present today. There's still workshops online actually also workshops that uh, will be run in 2.23. And, um, and as said many, many times before, go and watch some films behind the scene, uh, which maybe can bring you a little bit closer. Last and important for all of you is that um, we would like to invite you all for one day for free, if, 
if you sign up for one, even for one of our workshops before the 1st of January, we give you the first day for free. Uh, so if you went to Cuba with Arne, we give you the hotel room for the first day so you can get over the jet lag. And if Arne is there, or if Sisi is in Bhutan or wherever this workshop would be run, you join them, you go for lunch, you hang out, you see uh, the city. Those who go to Greenland would get the first day in, in Copenhagen, which is a cool concept actually, because you would get your equipment here and you would get overboard. Um, in, in, in Namibia, it could be that you got the, the day before we went to the sand dunes just to you know, heat up uh, the workshop. So what is the challenge for all of us? It's the big elephant walking around with a glass shop. It's called COVID. And the best we can do, and as we have done so far, is uh, monitoring the whole situation, be aware about how is it and, and, and what is possible and not possible. And then at the same time, be your gateway to explore this world. And we are also you guarantee that if better moments have to cancel due to any kind of COVID, you get your full amount back. That's just how it is. There's no discussions about that part. You will, of course, get your money. And, um, and we also know that it's so damn stressful for you to make up your mind due to all those things because what will happen next week and so on. But why not just be positive? It's Christmas, it's New Year, and before we know about it, we're on the other side of this stupid circus. So with those words, I would leave it over to Ben, and hopefully you have some few questions left. If not, then from, from, from my little humble office here in the evening, have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year, and uh, I want to see you all out there next year. Ben, would you, you please take it from here? Of course, yeah. Uh, we do have a final, final question, perhaps, for uh, yourself and uh, Tom and Anna, which was just what what all of your favorite Better Moments workshop is. Uh, maybe you'll be biased and name your own one, but uh, I think Sam just wanted to hear what your guys' favorites were. <laughs> Can I? Please Absolutely. go ahead. <laughs> First of all, Cuba, of course. But uh, when I was uh, watching the uh, the presentation uh, of Mongolia, uh, that was wow. I haven't been there. I've been in. I just counted last few days. I've been in 84 states all around the globe, which is quite a lot of traveling. But I was really inspired by by Mongolia workshop. I was really like, I should go there. You know with him that, that is my favorite of better moments and, and cuba of course <laughs> yeah i agree with you Anna. i think that 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 this this uh, mongolia is, is a special event also because that uh, it, it's it's one of those places that where you where you still can go and um, be by yourself and not that many um, uh, have been there before, um, so so you you can also enjoy a lot of great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. From from my side, to be honest, uh, yeah, I, I can speak about the three workshops that I'm leading or the four: uh, Finland, Lofoten, Namibia, Greenland. Hard to choose, to be honest. Very hard to choose. <laughs> it, it's they are completely different, you know. Uh, you know, Namibia. Yeah, is is a is is amazing, and for me maybe Namibia and Greenland, but they are completely different in 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 yeah in way of landscape and weather wise. <laughs> so yeah, but even yeah, I I I joined Svalbard as a, as a guest, uh, not as a leader, but I, I joined Svalbard as well. So yeah, mm. no, it is it is a little bit like yeah. Sorry, sorry. sorry? Yeah, just to finish it. Every workshop or every destination has has its has its uh, wonderful uh, wonderful things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree one hundred percent because it, it is this. Uh, it's like going for for a great dinner. You know, you can go to the buffet and you have all this wonderful food in front of you, or you go to a flower shop and you have all those flowers. It's the same with this with all those things which is going on, uh, which is which is out there waiting for, for everyone who want to go traveling, mm. and um, so it's for me it's, it's very actually very hard. It's not because <laughs> I'm in the business and I'm supposed to say so, but I actually think that that you could go on any of those 
uh, workshop we've been talking about tonight, you will have a very unique experience, actually. But, um, but it's, yeah. Agreed, agreed. Okay, well, um, I can see there aren't any more questions, so I think we could, uh, we could begin to wrap it up now, Christian. Uh, I want to start off by saying a huge thank you to each and every one of you who joined us here this evening or indeed uh, this morning or afternoon or middle of the night, depending on where you are. But it's been great to have you joining us. And also a huge thank you to our expert photographers, uh, Cisa, Tom, Hamid and Anna for joining us. It's been fantastic to hear your own insights on those workshops. Um, as Christian has mentioned, you can visit bettermoments.com for all the info, all the PDF guides on each of those destinations. And if you're interested in further webinars, you can also subscribe uh, via the webinars page so you don't miss out on future episodes like this. Um, we are, you may have noticed, recording today's session. So after this, I will be busy editing and I will get that out to you to make sure that you can watch it back. And we'll also share it on our social media channels so you can keep an eye on that as well to make sure you get it. And I'll also include all the links to each and every workshop so you can get the full overview after we've wrapped up this evening. Um, so from my side, all that's left to say is thank you all very much for attending. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. And we all look we really look forward to seeing you on one of our workshops next year. So thank you all very, very much.